So Yoko, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, female friendship is at the core of Unseen. Can you speak to getting these two great leads and making that story, that relationship between them, which happens all over the phone, uh, a compelling part to this thriller? Um, yes. First off, amazing background. Uh, looks great. Um, yeah, that was really the female friendship at the anchor of the story was what made me want to make the movie. I read the script and I was like, this is the key component where I can really imbue my own authentic experiences into. Um, my female friendships have been the most important friendships in my life and like the most important relationships in my life. So um, I really knew it in the casting process. I really want to find some two people who brought very different strengths and very different vulnerabilities to the table that would be complementary to each other. Um, you know, Midori immediately brought this like raw intensity and like strength to Emily and Jolene brought this immediate like vulnerability, but this kind of quieter strength that was really kind of buried underneath. So I just knew that together, like it was going to be like fire, like sparks. It was going to be like a really amazing thing. And thank goodness I was right. Cause it really was even on like the first zoom table read, which can be hard. Everybody was complimenting how much like chemistry they had immediately. Yeah. There's great chemistry in the movie and Midoriya, like Yoko said, there's a strength to your character. Um, and I, I love that you weren't just a damsel in distress. You're not just, you know, helpless you're whooping some ass in the beginning of the movie and, and while you need assistance there's still a lot of strength to this character what did you like about Emily being uh proactive in the script yeah man it's funny like even hearing you say that I'm like oh yeah Emily you know what I mean like like yeah. as actors you have so many different parts to yourself but then like a movie or a tv role comes up and then you like take one of those aspects and then you kind of blow it up to become a character and so it was so nice to play somebody where it like strength and and fortitude and resilience and just raw survival was the characteristic um it was so empowering and so fun I I yeah I I'm not gonna lie I felt like a superhero on some days and I I don't know do I feel like that in my day-to-day -day life very often absolutely not um, so it was, it was awesome. And I'm so grateful I got to do the part and, um, work opposite Jolene who, oh, when I first read the script, I will say, I loved my side. Don't get me wrong. But when I saw what happens with Sam towards the end and like the twist and like what she's been going through, I mean, that's the part that I really moved me. And so seeing Jolene bring that to life, um, on the screen and, and I was rooting for her so much like sam go sam and and it was awesome awesome and jolene you know there is that quiet strength to sam as was mentioned and and she seems over her head and she has her self-doubts throughout the beginning but she's always doing her best to be of assistance can you speak to just her resilience and her desire to help you know even though she has that doubt to her she's still doing her best yeah, I think she's just weighed down by life, um, doesn't see any hope. And then um, gets this phone call. And I think it is just the trust and just, even though Emily is literally about to die, she is cheer, she is my cheerleader, right? She is Sam's cheerleader. She's what keeps her going. She tells her that she is strong. So even though you have that small strength inside of you, if someone else shows you that you're of value, it can be amplified. So it really shows the power of community, the power of friendship. Um, and I do wanna say, Midori, you looked like a superhero. While I was watching you shoot, you absolutely scaling walls, like climbing through bushes and trees, you absolutely looked like a superhero. And I felt like, I, I just was in awe of your strength, like just not phys well, physically, yes, getting up the wall, but like just in the elements and um, just powering through everything and your work ethic. And you were just like, you're superwoman. Oh, thank you. And uh, let's just make this a compliment session because I think 
and they'll, you know, like Jolene, yes, you will always joke you're Sam, but you're not Sam. And like your ability, I feel like just so, um, what's the word when like, you don't care what anyone thinks? I don't, uh, wow, I'm losing all my words, but like that sense of just like, you were going there with Sam, no matter how it looks, no matter how it came across and you had no issue or, or no pride about like going to those places and to like being that insecure which I think is a hard thing to do and to a hard space. In a way, I think Jolene living in that space might have been harder, honestly, than me living in my space because I'm in a, ah, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live. And then she's like in, you know, your, your space was just, you know, it's so much anxiety and then so much to, you know, an end to play the, I feel like you always had that ending in you, the whole movie, and it was just heartbreaking, and I love you, Jolene. I love you. This is so sweet, and uh, Yoko, I was so impressed that this was your feature debut, and uh, you, you shoot it so confidently. Uh, what did it mean for you to have these two great Japanese-American women as your lead for you know a film that's so personal and is your debut here yeah you know i i mean i'm just thrilled and grateful to have these two women in general right like their talents were just so mind-blowing and their commitment and enthusiasm to the project was so above and beyond and um and then so yeah i mean and during the casting process it really just was like who's going to be the two best people for this role that has the best freaking chemistry that can carry this movie and make everybody care about them and their friendship um and then this like wonderful little miracle happened that they happened to both be Japanese American and then we kind of happen to share this identity even though we're all from different places you know like Jolene's Japanese American from Torrance and you know Midori's from New Jersey and I'm born in Japan and grew up in Minneapolis like we're actually quite diverse within ourselves but have you know a shared common background and so it was this extra special little gift that I got to get and you know to expand the what genre filmmaking is what horror what thriller is and who gets to be the heroes in those movies so I was you know stoked to be able to expand the representation of who gets to be heroes in those worlds and to have these two ladies um so it meant me you know it meant the world to me and again it was like it was a happy accident um that um I don't know that just makes me smile every day about yeah it's great and Midori what, what I love about Unseen is that this core idea of you being unable to see and needing guidance it's so basic yet it, it feels fresh it's so smart as well how was it stumbling a, around in the forest and making that seem convincing since you know I said something that certainly I take for granted and it's not something I think about but uh, when you see it in the movie and sh you see just how much we rely on it, obviously, and uh, you play it so convincing when you're searching around in the forest. Thank you. I mean, that was something I was worried about. I think Yoko and I had to talk about all the things I was worried about was how to do that and, and how to maintain that sort of impediment, I guess you would say, throughout the film. One thing that did help and, and what was cool when I first read the script is so I am negative six, negative six in each eye. Um, meaning like when I take out my contacts, I certainly cannot drive. If my little cute kitten was right there, I might not even see him unless he moved, um, which is a very bizarre example, but I just got a cat and I'm very excited about my cat. Um, and so I think that a fear of mine has been, I, in the back of my mind when I'm laying in bed, I'm like, what if like I was somewhere and I couldn't get my contacts back in? Like I've actually thought about that. And so that now Emily's um, more visually impaired than I am for sure. But that experience of feeling like when I wake up in the morning, right, I'm always like, I hate that moment, actually, because I'm like, I need my contacts, you know, so what would it be like to live in that space? Um, and I actually got to practice a lot when I got cast in the role, I went out into Central Park and without my contacts and just experienced the world in that way. Um, and so yeah, I would do that and just like try and take little glimpses of that, like, oh, okay, I noticed that I'm looking more about light as opposed to shape. And then when I would film it, I would focus on light, you know, little things like that. Um, so I, I hope, I hope I pulled it off. That was, you know, it's, 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 you know. Yeah, you, you definitely pulled it off. It, it looks great. And Jolene, you have just some really hilarious scenes with Missy Pyle. Um, and we see Sam shift at the gas station, just go hilariously off the rails. 
can you speak to working with Missy? And uh, she just seems so much fun. Missy Pyle is terrible. Um, <laughs> she's she is the most fantastic, like human being. Um, having her, I would love for her to spit skittles at me every day. Um, she is as funny off camera as on camera. Um, we had worked on a project a couple months prior. So it was fun getting to be reunited and get to be like a little bit more zany. Um, that that girl, when she commits, she commits. The names that she called me, that Yoko had to cut out for time probably, but they were they were very creative. Um, she's, she's a dream, she's lovely. We had a great time having guns pointed at me and, and harsh words being said, but it was in love and I loved it. <laughs> Yoko, uh, I was really impressed with the, the tenseness that the movie gives to the viewer. There's always that sense of foreboding dread that the ex-boyfriend is going to catch up. And uh, can you just speak to your approach to the film's pacing and keeping that tension high throughout? Because it just never really let up. And I, I thought just having that in the background, even during the like slower moments, just kept kept the viewer on edge. I'm so glad you say that because that's absolutely like something we, you know, me and my editor, my cinematographer, like we all were very cognizant of making sure that that tension never let, like never let up. Like we, it was a very intentionally designed thing. And even with the producer is always a discussion of like, oh, have we lost Charlie for too long? Oh, are they a little, are they feeling a little too casual right now? Like let's never lose the fear that should be motivating everything that's going on here. So, um, but yeah, in order to like make that occur, I think yeah, keeping the fa fast paced pacing and making sure there was something always going on and like the next crisis occurring was really important. And um, that kind of, you know, one thing after another crisis situation was definitely written into the script by the two writers who were great. Um, but again, I think a lot of that was just me also being in the audience's shoe like I always like to step back and be like if I was a viewer how would I feel right now what would I be thinking right now as these scenes are going by and I think as a viewer I'm actually quite an impatient one who's always just like can get easily get bored so I think um, that pacing came from my desire to just like never let the audience like take a deep breath <laughs> until the end of the movie and like give them relief then yeah you, you definitely pulled that off and Midori, um, Michael Patrick Lane just gives such an intense performance. He comes across as just a total creep. Um, what <laughs> stood out about him as a scene partner? Because uh, like he played that role as, as well as you could expect. Yeah, I mean, Michael was in it. Um, uh, he was very committed uh, and, and very down to... Uh... <laughs> be terrifying um and you know what that's what you need because there would really actually be nothing worse than having somebody come in and you know all acting takes courage and, and commitment and, and there would be probably nothing worse than some guy coming in being like oh I'm too scared to be mean you know like we we need that we need that and and he brought it you know um yeah it was it was a lot it was a lot, I think, that we we went through together. Uh, you know, having someone put their hands around your neck, it's 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 a lot. And even if you can try and separate it, your body still goes through all of that stuff. So I think that um, as much as I tried to separate that, there was a little bit of a mythology in my head about Charlie. And probably when I see Michael today, I'll be like, oh god! <laughs> but I know he's just Michael. <laughs> but he really. I mean, he was so committed, so committed. So props to that, for sure. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time today. I really enjoyed Unseen and really turned out great. So congrats to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much.